So that's probably 19, 20 pound that fish. <laughs> So you join me here today at the beautiful Larford Lakes near Styleport. We're here today to run through a tactic that's completely taken over the scene of match fishing the last sort of decade or so, and that's the method feeder. I'll run you through how I personally like to fish the method feeder, the baits I use, the setup I use, and how I go about fishing it. Hopefully we get amongst some great big monsters that Larford's known for, and we catch a few fish today. So. Let's run you through how I like to fish and uh, hopefully we catch a few fish along the way. So hopefully today I'm going to run you through a few tips that you can incorporate into your own fishing. Hopefully you take a few bits away from today. But first of all I'm going to run you through the bait selection. So here at Larford Lakes obviously it's fishery pellets only. Uh, so I've got some two mil micro pellets here. It's probably you know the, the number one bait these days for the method feeder. Um, Pellets are what fish on commercials used to eat in. Carp in particular just love these two mil pellets. Loads of attraction, quite sort of heavy as well, so don't get wafted around too much. It's sort of as much as ground bait if you like. Catch decent fish. And uh, yeah, that's probably the number one bait to use around a feeder. My tip's just gone round actually, I think. Yeah, there we go. So what I've done today Obviously we are coming into springtime, but it sort of changes how I like to prepare my pellets for the feeder. Um, so because it is absolutely, we're pretending it's springtime, but it's absolutely freezing. So that changes how I prepare the pellets for the feeder. In the summer months, they don't take very long to expand and take on the water. So you've got to be quite careful how long you soak them in the summer. In the winter, they could take a really long time to actually get to the right stage where you can put them around the feeder. So all I do, ideally you want to prepare them before you get to the venue, but today all I did was I tipped them into a bucket and I just covered them with what, not even enough water to cover the pellets. And I kept coming back to them and just mixing them around rather than sort of let them sit for too long, um, if you like, yeah, um, that they can sort of become too stodgy if you're not too careful. But at the same time, because it's winter, they can take quite a long time to, to expand and get sticky enough for the feeder. In the summer months, however, you know, on a normal day, I'd probably soak the pellets for sort of a minute to two minutes, maybe 90 seconds, drain off the water, and then 20 minutes later, they're ready to go. But in winter, you've got to be a little bit more careful of how you go. A lot of it's sort of trial and error, really. But like I said today, all I've done is just covered, covered it with a little bit of water, not enough to cover the pellets, and I've just kept on mixing it around, just so all the pellets are sort of evenly coated in enough water. And then I've left it for an hour or so, and they've been spot on, to be fair. And then all I've done after that is added a bit of my favourite bait booster. Looks like a nice fish. It just keeps them sort of sticky and a, a sort of nice consistency to use around the feeder. And obviously it's full of that flavour that these fish home in on. But we'll come back to uh, flavours and things in a minute. We'll just concentrate on getting this fish in. Oh, nice big common that one. Oh yes, that's a lovely specimen lake fish that one. Love these really big fish in here. When you get a big common like that, oh, that's probably close to 20 pound actually. <laughs> you get these really dark commons with big scales on them. And they're pretty impressive to look at actually. 
we have got a big mat behind us to deal with some of these big fish, but it might let me hold it for the camera. Look at that. That's probably 19, 20 pound, that fish. <laughs> Beautiful fish. One that, that this lake's pretty famous for. So hopefully we get a few more fish like this and uh, I'll run you through a few more tips. Let's put him back. Now we've just put that fish back and we've been rudely interrupted. I might as well run you through the uh, rod setup and gear I'm using today before I go back to the bait. So typical commercial, you know, a lot of the time we're opting for a, a 10 foot Superior X. This one's an 11 foot because we're fishing on a big lake today. Don't really very often need a 12 foot rod for this lake because I can sort of reach reach the middle with this rod with quite ease to be fair but on bigger lakes a lot for a 12 foot maybe even a distance master on big lakes like Boston and stuff but today we've got 11 foot so I can fish it with any way if you like I can drop it under my rod along the bank or out in the middle no problem six pound or eight sinking feeder mono I think I've got eight pound today yet yeah. I mean it fish with a massive fish so you don't really want to risk it with light main lines you just simply don't need to so a nice durable main line like that and then today i've just opted for the standard small size ics method feeder um sort of the most popular size i will i'll uh, i'll come back to sort of feeder choice and that but i will i will up sizes probably throughout the day maybe have a little bit of a play but that's sort of the go-to feeder if you like and today, because we're allowed to, we're using an elasticated stem. So I've got the standard stem that comes with a 12 hollow in there. Um, simply because um, when you're, you're fishing sort of along an edge or when there's a lot of fish in the peg, you can fish a slack line then and basically the feeder fishes itself because the, the fish will bolt against the feeder and it will be on basically and all you have to do is pick the rod up and sort of reel into it. On the, I will come back to it, but on other venues I will fish in line, um, depending on what's in the lake. But today we're fishing for sort of big fish, like the one I've just caught. So I've got 017 power line, hook length, four inches, and I'll fish either a 14 KKH or a size 12. I've got them here. Um, size 12. MCMB, which is a, a slight circle hook, if you like. Preston have done sort of that sort of hook for years and not, not many people have known about it but they're great hook choice a sort of when I am fishing for big fish like today I'll up for size 12 or even a 10 um, but my go-to hook is probably that size 12 kkh sort of a standard sort of curved hook but it's importantly it's really strong and that's sort of really important when you're fishing a method feeder with short hook lengths you're you're putting a lot of strain on your gear so you need a heavy reliable kit that's not going to let you down today all i've got on is a, a band on a hair like that and i can fish multiple hook baits with that obviously i will sort of if i was fishing bandoms alone i'd probably opt for a bayonet but today with that band i can band a bandom or a pellet or i could even band some maggots which is a great hook bait um, and it means I don't have to change my hook length. I can use multiple baits on one hook length if you like. I don't have to mess around too much. So that's simple really. Um, and that's my setup. But I might as well get the rod in the water and I'll come back to bait choice. And you can see today we're using bandoms and you can see there's not many yellow ones left. So that's my favorite color. <laughs> I think I'll opt for a washed out one. Save me yellow ones for later. All I'm doing is band and abandon. Twist it around my rod. There we go. I'm just band and abandon and simply fishing with two mil fishery pellets around the feeder. Like I said, I'll come back to 
the bait I'm using and how I'm going to load the feeder in a minute. I'm just going to get this rod out. There we go. There we go. Loosen the clutch while I'm talking to you so I don't lose my rod. Also worth a mention the sort of setup I've got today. I've got a rear grip arrest. It's going to hold on to my rod if I do get an aggressive bite. So it grips the rod really nicely. I've also got a rest at the front that's going to be nice and secure. It's not going anywhere. Everything's nice and tight. So if I do get an aggressive bite, it's, uh, it's not going to pull my rod in basically. It's also worth mentioning, I like quite a short rod arm when I'm fishing a method feeder. Oh, there's a bite. Oh, has it come off? Yeah, so I, I like to fish a short method feeder arm, basically, because like you just saw there, you get quite aggressive bites. And I want the bite to take up the sort of full action of the rod. I think if you've got a rod rest too close to your rod tip, it's sort of, um, you, you risk getting cracked off on the bite a lot of the time because there's not enough sort of give in the rod. So a nice short rod rest, all nice and secure. And uh, yeah, just uh, nice and comfortable on the bank. So a lot of the time you can be waiting for bites. If it doesn't look like we are today. So everything's nice and tidy. And hopefully the fish are gonna let me talk her through a few more bait choices. So, like I mentioned before, two mil pellets, go-to feed if you like. Flavour them today with a bit of bait booster. Quite often you find different venues respond to different flavours. Venues like this in particular, is carp fish quite a lot. So they see sort of flavours of boilies and they respond to different flavours. Uh, sort of more so than sort of a, a bog standard commercial fishery if you like. So flavours can be really effective. Especially, like today, the water's quite coloured. We've been doing a few renovations on the lake and it's made the water quite coloured, so using strong flavours can be really good. So we've used that power scope today. It seems to be working. Other options, I've got some four mil fishery pellets. Sometimes using a heavier bait, like four mils, can be really effective when there's a lot of fish in the peg and it's something a little bit different and not many people do it. I've done it for as long as I can remember to be fair, but I've never really sort of known why it works, but I think it's just because it's sort of a heavy bait on the bottom and then if you present your sort of lighter hook bait over the top, then they can't fail but take it in if you like really. So four mil pellets can be a nice little alternative. And also I can't fish a method without having a bit of match method mix set up. This mix, I remember when it came out and the first time I used it, I broke a fishery a venue record. First time I've used it and ever since I can't stop using it. It's just the perfect ground bait for the method feeder. You even get a free method with it. it should be spot on today, to be fair. And it's just a nice, nice sort of mix, nice consistency. And it's perfect for the method feeder. If I was sort of targeting a few more, well, perhaps open water, and I was targeting a mixture of carp and bream, I'd probably incorporate this into the mix, maybe fish 50-50 with fishery pellets, two mils and ground bait. And that way it just sort of hedges my bets. The ground bait's got all the attraction, it's gonna tr attract skimmers, but you've also got the, the sort of two mils there to give them a bit, bit of feed, and it sort of hedges your bets for skimmers and carp, if you like. But also, we know how effective ground bait can be in the margins. So today I've got the option of also fishing a bait up feeder like this, putting loads of bait in the margins, and sometimes that can really work to draw fish in. Obviously, we're getting a few bites today, so probably won't need to employ the ground bait down the margins, but it's, it's always an option I like to have. Then coming up to the hook baits, I mentioned bandoms. We've got some six mils here, I've just got a pot with a complete mixture. There's some fluoro ones, some washed out ones, 
few yellow power scope x ones i just put them all in one pot obviously i need to top up the yellow ones because they've been the most popular this winter and i mentioned bream and skimmers and other species so i've got some microbandums if you want to drop down and fish one of those on the hook if i'm struggling for bites then that's a great option we've also got maggots and corn Obviously I mentioned a bait up feeder, we could even feed a few maggots in the margins with a bait up feeder and fish a method over the top. But maggots is a great sort of hook bait for the method feeder. Whether it's one, two, three maggots on the hook, that can be really effective. And also I've got a bit of a bit of corn with me, just sort of a change hook bait. And also, like I said, if I feed the margins, I've got the option of feeding a bit of corn down there too. So that's it for bait really, um, also worth a mention while I'm here, I mentioned about flavours and things, so I've, not so much in summer if you like, but sort of winter, spring, uh, w when the water's a bit more cooler, or coloured like today, using flavours and additives can be really effective. Like I said, I flavoured my pellets with power scope packs today but also a great option is to sort of drizzle a bit of haze over the top of the feeder before you cast out. You'll be amazed how much that can draw fish in. You can create a little bit of a cloud in the water, but also there's that flavour coming off the feeder as it goes down. It can be particularly effective in sort of big open venues where you, you sort of draw in fish into your peg. That could be a brilliant way, way of drawing a few fish. So that's pretty much it for bait choices. Nice and simple. I'll leave this out a little bit longer, I'll recast and then I'll run you through a few more tips. So before I cast out again, I'm going to run you through different ways you can load a method feeder. See this bit's quite important because basically everyone on the banks fishing the same feeder, normally the same hook bait pretty much, and the way you load the feeder is how, what, what makes all the difference sometimes if you like. So a lot of the time I've got to think how I want my hook bait to be presented on the feeder and how fast I'm getting bites. If I'm fishing for F1s and things and I want a really quick bite, then all I do is I lay the hook bait straight in the feeder, sprinkle the pellets on top, and then push my feeder into the mold, click the button, and it's good to go. And that presents the hook bait on top so I'm able to get a really quick bite. The only downside to that today is we're probably waiting a bit longer for bites we're fishing for bigger fish that can waft it around and that hook bait will sort of fall off the side and sort of there's potential there for it to be sort of forgotten about if you like and they'll go for the main ball rather than the hook bait so today what I'm doing is I'm using that same sort of setup if you like but I'm refilling the mold so I'm sort of giving it a double skin but importantly I'm burying that hook bait in amongst a lot of free offerings so it's not going to get wafted around and when a fish does come into that my hook bait with a bit of luck is going to be near that sort of main ball and it's going to get sucked up by a big fish so it's worth thinking about how you load the feeder obviously if you're fishing for smaller fish and you want quick bites in shallow water then sort of you want your hook bait sort of towards the top if you like so it's not going to get, take too long for it to be released but for bigger fish and you're being more patient then sort of try and bury it. So there's a few different options to load in your feeder. Let's get it in the water. All right, so now that's in the water, it's also worth mentioning as well about tailoring your feed pellets and mix for the venue that you're fishing. Obviously I've just molded a feeder, but it, with two mil pellets, you sort of can't really compact it hard enough. Um, Cause once it's in the water, they break down really fast. And that's why it's really important when you're fishing a deeper venue to make your pellet sticky. So that might mean adding a bit more bait booster to make the mix sticky. Or if the venue allows, then I'll add uh, sticky method pellets because they're a lot more stickier than your sort of bog standard fishery pellets or fin perfect pellets. Just mixing a few of, that, few of them in with your mix can make it really sticky because it's really important when you're fishing a deep venue Obviously it takes a long time for your feeder to hit the bottom, so you need a stickier mix to keep your hook bait intact in that feeder in order to get a bite. 
So it's worth playing around with your mixes, uh, where it's just sometimes just worth adding a bit of ground bait to make it a little bit more sticky. But it's important to play around with your mixes to sort of tailor it to the venue that you're fishing. So it's worth also mentioning now feeder choice. Obviously there's a few different sizes of feeders. We've got the, the one that we're fishing in a minute, the sort of bog standard one. Uh, we've got the next size up that I, I like to use on sort of venues like this or sometimes bream venues. And you've also got your big bertha one that I like to use down the edge in the summer. There's also a smaller size. If I can get it out somewhere. No. Nope. There's also a smaller size down from that one. Quite a new one. I think it's called a mini or micro ICS. It's basically the same shape as that, but it's really small. That's great for sort of F1 venues or middle of winter, shallow venues, when you're sort of looking for smaller fish and smaller species and not feeding a lot of bait. Most of the time it's swapping between these two feeders. This one's great for putting a bit more bait in your peg or like I mentioned before, I quite like you to use that on bream venues where you want a bit more bait going through to sort of build a peg. But to be fair, for carp most of the time, that just seems like the right sort of size, a little parcel of bait for sort of one bite and one fish at a time if you like. So that's sort of my go-to on most commercial commercial venues, just a small ICS feeder. And they're sort of the, the feeders I go to. Also I mentioned the, the big one. <laughs> I think it I'm not sure if it, I think it's an XL one and it comes with that orange mould. Not many people know it exists, but it's one that I like to use down the edge in the summer. I fish a lot of feeder only venues and uh, you can't obviously lose feed by hand like we can today, but it's great to put like a, a great big sort of volume of bait, but still be fishing effectively if you like for big fish like this today. So that's a great option for middle of the summer fishing down the edge. If you, whether you're pleasure fishing or just feed a, fishing a feeder match, that can be a great option. But there are obviously a few more choices. There's obviously XR feeders, like banjo type feeder, which is the same sort of um, same sort of style, but it's it's got these walls around the outside of it, and that can be great for deeper venues because it keeps the sort of hook bait and bait intact in the feeder. It gives it a chance to reach the bottom, which, like I said before, is really important. So I tend to use that when I'm fishing a big distance. Just keep it keeps the bait intact, so I know it's fishing effectively. Deeper venues as well. Oh, getting a line bite. I'll opt for that one sometimes, but because we're coming into spring and summer, I do like to opt for a method feeder instead. I just think it gives it a bit more traction. Oh, there's a liner. Just tighten up into it. I think there's a bit more traction, and I don't actually mind there's a, if there's a sort of odd pellet coming off of it as it falls through the water because I think that draws fish into the peg. And also a standard method feeder because it's sort of more aerodynamic. I'm watching my tip because I'm getting a lot of line bites. Because uh, because it's aerodynamic I quite like to use it on long distances too. The tip's going to go around in a minute. <laughs> it's just doing this. I'm getting distracted. Can you see that? There's, a, there's obviously a fish there. Tip's just going around. I've actually just dropped it down the edge there. And that's why it's important to fish an elasticated stem. Obviously I'm fishing quite a slack line, but if that was a free running feeder, it wouldn't be fishing as, as effectively because I'm getting a lot of liners and a lot of fish in the peg. There, I've just got a slight bend in the tip. It just lets me know what's happening without too much tension there. There's obviously a few fish there. That might be on actually, that one. Worth having a look. Yep. So with an elasticated feeder, you can be a bit more patient with it and just gives you a little bit more time to sort of 
tell the difference between a line bite and a proper bite. Obviously we had a few indications there but it just sort of steadily went round and it was pretty obvious that we had a fish on. But at the same time if, if that was a free running feeder fishing against an island or down the margins there's a chance that because you're sort of tightening into it there's a chance that it's going to fall down the slope a bit more. Nice big mirror that one. So if I'm fishing on steep banks or down the edge when there's a lot of fish, island pegs, if I'm allowed a lot, a lot for an elasticated feeder. But when I'm fishing for F1s and maybe smaller species like skimmers, I'll try and opt for an inline feeder because it lets me, lets me see all the little bites. But today, we're just looking for big pool rounds like that one. Ugh. And fishing for great big lumps. That was on a waft there again. I'll hold that one up, it's quite a pretty one. If he let me. Another chunky fish. Gnarly old mirror. Lovely fish. Lovely mouth on it as well. Ooh, let's put him back. There he goes. So they're pretty much the feeders I like to use and why I use them. Obviously the other option is a pellet feeder but that's similar to an XR feeder. Just make sure that the bait gets to the bottom. I quite like to use it on deep, really deep venues. But most of the time I opt for an ICS feeder just like that. I think it's called the small size. I've just got a 20 gram feeder on today. It's worth mentioning the weights of feeders as well. Obviously the ICS one comes in 20, 30, 45, might even be a bigger one. But today, I think there's a 60, yeah, 60. 75 as well, blimey. Um, but today I've just opted for a 20 gram. It's, it's quite important, it's, there's not a great deal of wind at the minute, we'll get up later, but 20 grams just enough to get me to where I need to fish without causing too much commotion. Because a lot of the time, if you fish a big heavy feeder like a 30 or a 45, when you don't need to, that can sort of spook fish. And that's not what we want to do when we're catching great big fish like that, because obviously a, a, a 20 pound fish or a 10 pound fish can be a big proportion of your weight. So you don't want to be, don't want to be scaring them away. So a nice light feeder like that is uh, perfect today. Nice 20 gram one. Try another wafter. I think we caught that one on a washed out one. I think I'll try a nice bright one today, this time. Obviously the water's quite coloured, so you find quite often that using a bright hook bait like that can be really effective. Then in the summer, when the water's not quite so clear, I tend to find that a washed out bait like that or a six mil pellet or an eight mil pellet just something that blends in with the feed a bit more can be quite effective like i said today i'm just double skinning it so that hook bait's buried in a big nice big volume of bait obviously you can only put so much bait in that mold so by sort of giving it a double double whammy you get a nice big volume of bait without using a big feeder just give it a nice squeeze before i chuck out actually caught that one from the margin so we'll have another little go down there. Obviously I could be fishing a pole down there today but on great big venues like this when there's a lot of wind, a lot of tow, sometimes just fishing a method feeder down the margins or sort of on your short pole line can be a lot more effective. Obviously a big venue like this it tows a lot, there could be a lot of current going through the water, it's a fish in a pole, you can often foul up fish and it can cause you a bit of grief, but by fishing a method feeder, it's down there, it's fishing itself, and all we need to do now is wait and be patient. Hopefully we get a few more bites. So the next thing we need to think about is where to actually fish. During the winter and colder months, I tend to sort of try and target the open water, maybe start short and then work my way out. Not very often I use a clip 
during the winter, just sort of casting around, trying to find one or two fish, find where they are, try different spots in my peg. As we come into the warmer months, oh, there's one, I'll then clip up, maybe pick a spot that's comfortable, sort of 30 metres maybe, and try and build a peg. And sometimes by fishing a clip, you can sort of draw them into the same spot and as the session goes on, it gets better and better. Also, like you saw there, I was fishing down the edge there. As we're coming into spring, obviously the water's really cold, but if we get a bit of sunshine like we have at the minute, it does warm up really quickly in the shallower areas of the lake, whether it's an island or down the edge. So a lot of the time, that could be a great area of the peg to target, especially in the warmer months or in the spring, as it warms up a little bit. It's a small one for special lake standards. So, fishing to margins or islands can be really effective in the spring when it's just starting to warm up. Nice little common there. But it's also important to remember at this time of year, the water's not really, it's not sort of, it's not a, a sort of comfortable temperature for the fish to be in the shallow water all the time. So sometimes I think people get carried away with casting really tight to islands and sometimes it's just that little bit too shallow. So it's, it's quite important to sort of have a play, a bit of trial and error. Don't necessarily cast really tight to islands just find the sort of depth that the fish feel comfortable at and that can relate to today we're fishing down the margins this time we haven't got an island but it's really shallow close in and then it will drop away to sort of three or four foot and i'm finding that fish are feeling a bit more comfortable a little bit further away from the bank and that's why i'm getting a few bites when i'm casting sort of three or four meters away from the bank like that. And all I'm doing, I'm not tightening up to the feeder because I've got a feeling there's a few fish down there. I've just locked it into my rest. Importantly, I'm slacking off the clutch. I'm not fishing to a clip because the bites today are going to be savage. All I've got is I've got a marker down the margins. So I know roughly the area. I'm not feeding it too much of a tight spot. If I was fishing further down the bank, sort of 20 metres or so, I might fish to a clip and then just be ready to unclip when, the, when I do get a savage bite. And that's when sort of measuring sticks come in because you can, you can fish to the same spot, unclip. When you do catch one, you can go to your sticks and measure off 20 metres, 30 metres to get to the exact spot again. And then you're fishing without having to sort of cast out and put the clip back on obviously back in the olden days we probably i say olden days probably 10 years ago we used to use line markers and knots on the clip to sort of mark where we're fishing and then we cast out and re, -re clip on the mark oh that might have been a savage bite then line bite i think to get back to the mark again whereas with a stick the sticks, oh it is a fish, with the sticks <laughs> you're, you're able to clip up to the same spot without spooking the peg and you can also fish multiple rods on the same line. Like a lot of feeder matches I quite often have a, a feeding rod and one that I'm going to fish with so I'll have a feeding rod with some heavy braid if it's allowed and a big bait up feeder like this one, put a big volume of bait in with that and then we'll fish a feeder over the top. Obviously, if you're, if you're a pleasure angler, you don't need to go through all that because you'll be allowed to loose feed bait like hand and it might be that you sort of feed balls like this and fish a feeder over the top. Or in the summer months, you might be feeding eight mil pellets or six mils out into open water and fishing a method feeder over the top of that can be really effective, especially when fish are grubbing around in the silt. Fishing a method feeder over the top can be a big focal point. 
it's great for when you're fishing a bomb and feed are over the same line. You can swap and change and see what's best on the day. Sometimes a bomb will work or sometimes a nice feeder ball with some two mils can slip up a big fish like this one. Look at that. Lovely fish. Oh, not doing my back any good. Nice big cut mirror again. Bottom lip, perfectly hooked. Lovely big fish, slipping straight back. There he goes. As I mentioned before, I'm fishing a elasticated feeder because we're allowed to here today. I'm literally fishing it straight out of the packet, standard one there. Comes with 12 hollow, which to be fair. As we come into the warmer months, I'll probably swap that for maybe a 15 hollow, which is the dark blue one. It's just a bit more durable. So there's the odd rock and bits and bobs around. So it's all right today because it's still cold, but as we get into the warmer months, I'll opt for a heavy one. And you can just tie that yourself. Nice and easy. Um, so we've had that from the margins. We're for, Having another go, still got my bandam on the hook. Give it a nice big pile this time. So when you're fishing like a double skin, it's worth being a little bit more gentle with it. So it keeps intact. And then you push a button a few more times and then you get sort of a, a tower of bait. But it's, importantly, it's a nice big volume of bait. Nice and positive. Hopefully feed the peg as well. That one's a bit further out from the bank, but that's all right. Hopefully we get another big one. So there's a little run through of different spots that I like to fish. Hopefully uh, we get a few more fish now. So I mentioned before the hook bait I've been mainly using today is six mil bandoms. We're fishing with a big fish today, so a nice big visual hook bait has been really good. But there are obviously other options that I like to carry with me, um, depending on how the session's going and what I'm fishing for. So if I was struggling today, obviously I've got the option of fishing for bream and skimmers and things. So I could just simply scale down what I'm doing and fish a micro on the hook, scale down my hook length to maybe a 16 or an 18 GPM with a band on the hair again and fish one of those on the hook, just sort of a scaled down scale down of what I'm doing now and I can drop down my line diameter as well to sort of 013 maybe 015 wouldn't want to drop too low because there are some big carp in this lake but obviously it depends on the venue and if I was fishing for f1s and smaller skimmers then micro bandoms maggots small pellets like a six mil pellet can be a really good option but there are obviously a few more choices um, that I like to carry with me. So I've got maggots with me. I can simply just hook them straight on the hook if I've got a few spade ends tied up or I can use the same hook length that I'm using today. I'll just show you. So I've got my pellet bander here. I'm just putting the bander through the band. It's all twisted up. There we go. Open it up like that and I can just simply lay two or three maggots in that band close it back up and I've got the option there of fishing maggots without changing my hook length. Obviously the bonus with that is my whole hook bait, whole hook if you like, is exposed it's not being masked so I'm more likely to hook the fish like that without the hook point being masked. But I can also just have, a, have that set up as it is but quickly change the maggots or various hook baits like pellets, bandoms, whatever with the same hook bait, hook length if you like. So that's one option. I've got corn with me in clear water. Corn can be a great hook bait, nice and visual, nice and heavy as well. Sometimes when there's a lot of fish in your peg, a heavier hook bait, like a grain of corn can be really good because it gets wafted around a little less. But I've also got with me some meat. So I've got my punch kit here. I've got a few slices of meat, just the option of 
fish and a little punch piece of meat on the hook. What's the plus side to that, it's nice and it's like using a wafter really, but it's got that nice soft texture and it's nice and smelly too. I like to use quick stops on them, so I'll have a few hook lengths tied up with a quick stop. So there. So I've got quick stops and bayonets and bands, various different things tied up. The other option, whilst I'm on the subject of quick stops, is four mil expander or six mil just on the hook. A lot of people don't realise that you can get away with using really soft hook baits on a method feeder. Um, so I prepare those in a different way than I would be on the pole. I simply soak them with a bit of water but add a lot more of this and it makes it a lot firmer. It's important to still have that water in for it to sort of soak up and soften up but by using a bit more of that can make it a really sort of tough durable hook bait that you can use on the method feeder. So here we go we're into another nice fish. It's been noticeable today that the fish are a bit more active than they have been and they're responding to a bit more a bit more bait, a bit more regular casting. So we've not needed the stopwatch today, although it's worth mentioning that a lot of the time it's really important to keep an eye on your bite time. Sometimes you can get distracted and you don't realise it's two minutes. It feels like 20 minutes when you're not catching sometimes. So it's really important to sort of see how long it takes to get a bite and what your bite times are and you'll find a, a sort of pattern if you like sometimes you'll get bites after seven minutes bites after nine minutes so you'll know roughly how long to leave it in the water and how often to recast like i said today not needed to because we're catching great big fish like that and uh, we've had a brilliant session here today. Let's put this one back. Hopefully you've taken away a few hints, hints and tips to help you catch a few fish next time you fish a method feeder. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Press the YouTube channel for more fishing content.